read together this morning from the Epistle of Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 2. This is in connection with Wednesday 21, question and answer 54, that deals with the truth of the Church of Christ. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision, by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens, from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments, contained in ordinances, or to make of himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building, fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Thus far we read from the sacred scriptures. Our attention is turned this morning to the Heidelberg Catechism, Lord's Day 21. Question and answer 54. We will not be discussing this morning questions and answers 55 and 56. But that's too much material for us to consider properly. We'll concentrate this morning on the words of the Apostolic Confession, I believe in Holy Catholic Church. And next Sunday morning, the Lord willing, we'll discuss, I believe, in the communion of the saints and the forgiveness of sins. 
Question and answer 54 of Lord's Day 21 reads as follows. What well, believest thou concerning the Holy Catholic Church of Christ? That the Son of God from the beginning to the end of the world gathers, defends, and preserves to himself by his Spirit and Word out of the whole human race the Church chosen to everlasting life, agreeing in true faith, and that I am and forever shall remain a living member thereof. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, there are two remarks that I wish to make by way of introduction. The first is this, that we must bear in mind that we are discussing here the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, whom Christ poured out upon the church on Pentecost after and because of his great work which he performed in his suffering, death, resurrection, and ascension. The Apostolic Confession calls our attention in the first place to the fact that the work of the Spirit is the gathering of the church. <clears throat> now because our fathers in ancient times, soon after the apostolic era, were not premillennialists, <coughs> they pointed out that although we are talking about the work of the Spirit as the Spirit of the exalted Christ, that nevertheless, that work of the Spirit, which is the gathering of the church, took place both in the Old and the New Testament. Notice the wording of the confession here. That the Son of God, that is Christ, from the beginning to the end of the world, gathers, defends, and preserves to himself by his spirit and word out of the whole human race, a church chosen to everlasting life. In the second place, I want to call your attention to the fact that the doctrine of the church as it is found throughout the scriptures and summarized here in question and answer 54 is an object of faith. We believe in Holy Catholic Church. Without faith, you would never, never believe that there is such a thing as a Holy Catholic Church. <coughs> 